Hey, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can convert this uh, karaoke delay board from AliExpress to work with a URAC modular system. So there are lots of plans out there uh, or ideas about how to do that conversion. Uh, Waveform Magazine had their version and um, Toddbot, his website has something. Jan from AddictiveNoise.com had the best plan, I think, had some smart ideas for how to uh, tweak this board, how to hack it. So that's kind of what I based everything off of. If you look at his website, he has more detail in terms of like what is happening. Mostly this video is going to show you how to do it. The kinds of things he's trying to do though are to reduce the input level. So the uh, microphone input on this board is amplified 30 times. And so that's maybe too hot for, definitely too hot for your rack. And so the first thing to do is uh, get get that level the input level down and the way that he did it is pretty smart is basically just taking this op amp uh, there's a dual op amp that provides that amplification for the mic input and he basically just has us bypass that so that was pretty smart and uh, the next thing he's trying to do is to extend the delay time and the way that he does that is basically by modifying what's labeled as the time pot, changing the resistance, and uh, that's one of the hacks that we do. Uh, also getting endless crazy feedback, and so uh, he's basically hijacking the uh, this pot that was only ever used for stereo mixing. Doesn't matter to us, of course, so uh, that ends up becoming part of this hack to make endless feedback. And the last thing is being able to modulate the day time, the delay time uh, using the mod jack on the front panel and a DIY Vactrol to allow that to be voltage controlled. So here's the board and the kinds of things that you'll need are the actual board from AliExpress, the uh, front panel which I got from Osh Park. I'll put a link in the description so that you can just click order there. Um, and then all the rest of these components, you do need some knobs. The ones that it comes with are pretty bad. And um, other than that, I think um, the five pin header that we use, you might use an actual IDC connector, but that doesn't matter. So here's the uh, front panel. I kind of like the purple that Osh Park does. And then I got these purple knobs from uh, Thonk and they work perfectly, way better than the originals. So again, if you look at uh, Jan's instructions, he'll go over all of the details for why and how we're doing these things. I added a few tweaks to his instructions, why I thought, which is why I thought it was worth making a video to kind of show uh, where his instructions differ from mine. Uh, but otherwise, look on there as kind of a counterpart to this video. So the first thing to do is to remove a bunch of components and uh, that includes these white jacks. We do need access to some of the pins that are there. Rather than trying to unsolder, uh, my, my strategy for most of the board is if you cannot heat something up and so unsolder it, either with an iron or hot air, it, you're better off. So here I'm just removing the plastic heading uh, header housings, and then I'll have access to the kind of posts that are below, and uh, that'll keep me from having to unsolder those. We also have to get rid of these two big quarter inch uh, jacks. We don't need them, don't need access to the points that they solder to on the board. So the easiest thing to do is just break them off. So uh, I do this um, just with snips, with pliers, whatever's around, just taking care to not rip up any traces on the board, which it's uh, easier and safer to do it this way than it is to try and unsolder them where you might damage the board, in my opinion. This... Um, plug here is basically where uh, AC voltage would come in in the original design and for us we're going to use those three points to have 12 volts ground and uh, negative 12 volts come in. So for this I will not try and uh, cut it off, I will instead try and unsolder it. And uh, this is where you could either install a 10 pin IDC connector that you'd find on most modules or you can just do what I'm about to do which is use a five pin uh, male header and just um, be careful when you plug it in. So uh, it's not something that you're, you know, making for sale or something. So you don't have to really worry about that. Just make sure you always plug it in the correct way and you'll be fine. 
So here's the five pin male connector and we only need three pins from it. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just cut off two of them so that I'm left with uh, three pins. Again, the center one is ground, the one that's closest to me is negative 12 volts and then the higher one is 12 volts. Next thing is to get rid of a bunch of components. So removing these four resistors and these three capacitors. So here are all the five components removed, except for the one in the lower right. I kind of forgot and I did it later. So one of the things that we're doing in this hack is um, taking, taking a look at this IC right here, which is a dual op amp. We are uh, essentially bypassing one of its op amps, which was used, used as in the original design as the preamp for the microphone. And so, as I said before, Jan is having us bypass that preamp so the levels are not too hot as they come in. And uh, what I thought is we could take advantage of that free op amp and use it as a driver for the LED uh, in the back troll that we're going to make. So uh, I'm just telling you that now because we can take a quick little break and look at the schematic. That's essentially the reverse engineered schematic as I could tell. That was the microphone preamp. And this is what it looks like afterward where I, uh, are ha I'm, I've just had you remove a bunch of those components. That's why there is the, all these dead ends here. And then you can see just from this that the CV in goes right into the op amps negative input. Uh, there are a couple components and essentially this becomes our um, LED driver. Instead of the original design from Jan and from others, I think, which just has uh, the CV input going right to the LED, uh, that could work for most cases, but I know I connected um, maths output to uh, the envelope output to this CV input when it didn't have an op amp driver and um, it didn't like it. So it just sort of it stopped cycling. And I think it's maybe too much to ask a random module to drive an LED with its output. So this is working a lot better. The next thing we're going to do is put the front panel on. So to do that, we have to remove these little metal tabs on each of the potentiometers. And put the nuts on so that it'll stay in place. Now we're going to put the jacks in place. Uh, each of the jacks has a slightly different orientation. For this first one, the tab goes up. And actually the second one is the same. So just um, have that tab going up. For the last one, make that tab face down toward the bottom of the front panel. So we're going to take advantage of that um, connector that we removed. The center of those three pins is a ground pin. So we're going to connect that ground pin to each of those tabs on the uh, three jacks. So I just made like a little uh, hook here and hooked that um, post. This is a lot easier than trying to remove all of those things with hot air or whatever and then trying to solder into the hole. Uh, and then I just fed it through so that it goes through each of those or connects to each of those uh, three ground pins. Uh, the next thing to do is we're going to replace this 10K resistor that we removed with 11.5K. So for me, that was a 6.8K resistor and a 4.7K resistor. And basically, I just put them in series so that they um, make up about 11.5K. As with most of the things on this board, I think it's a lot better if you can just solder right to the top of the board. So if uh, you're able to clip that resistor and leave a little bit of the legs, then you can solder to those little stubs of legs. Otherwise, you can connect it right to uh, solder right to those little blobs of solder that are left. Now there's some wiring to do. So we'll basically get each of the three jacks to be wired in. Uh, this bottom lug of the center jack is going to be uh, connected to this wire, which goes to one of our removed resistor spots. 
And this wiring is actually kind of just repurposed from the wires that came with the karaoke board. I think if you can keep them thin and uh, stranded, you're probably better off than whatever wire you've got hanging around, but probably anything will work. We have to connect that uh, other bottom jack too. So we connect to the lug there and then to the bottom pin of that other white housing that we remove. This last jack goes through this hole and then connects to that point on the second uh, from the bottom. Sorry, this, yeah, <laughs> the second pot from the bottom. It's totally possible to connect these things in a kind of circuit bending hacky sort of way that is solid electrically and mechanically. At the same time, I don't want to be judged on this soldering because it's definitely in the realm of Frankenstein action. Um, but, you know, just a quick heating is probably enough as long as everything's gotten hot enough to, um, to join properly. So I'm feeding that wire through the first hole there and then around to the last remaining jack that needs something soldered to it. The order that I'm doing this in is kind of random. I've done it three times, and so I didn't really come up with a good order to do these in. You can tell that in some places uh, things are kind of tight, and probably there's a, a better order. Um, in particular, you know, you can always make it work, but you just have to make sure that when you put the soldering iron in there, you're being really conscious of where it goes and that you're not melting an adjacent wire or uh, heating up a component you shouldn't be. My technique with most of these is to just put a little blob of solder on the iron, tack it in place, and then get in a better position to be able to solder it properly. Now we've got a few wires to put in on the back of the board. Uh, you can see where they go here, and again, they're described in Jan's um, page on addictivenoise.com. If you can keep them to about the right length, uh, you'll be better off because this is pretty, you know, these need to stay pretty tight to the board so that they don't cause problems with adjacent modules. Uh, so that's the first jumper there. And I just move this wire over a little bit so that it's not at risk of touching that other point on the board there. And then the last wire goes from this point on the potentiometer down to this point on the IC. Um, I just kind of rearrange the wires a little bit so that everything will be routed in a way that doesn't uh, stack wires on top of each other too high. So there should only be kind of two layers of wiring here. So to avoid having the wires piling up, um, 
I put it through that hole, that mounting hole in the board. And then I'll come back around uh, uh, the bottom of the board. To connect to the pin of the IC, you don't really have like a, you know, a wire from the component sticking up. So uh, what I did here is just kind of use the tweezers to lift that little bit of the uh, the IC's leg and then tuck this wire underneath. So that's it. That's, those are all the wires that need to be soldered on the bottom, except for this little jumper. Uh, and this is where we're essentially converting two 50K uh, potentiometers into one 100K. And uh, for this, I just use a resistor as the um, jumper wire. Just get the end of the leg on there and solder right over to the other one, then snip it off. It's important if things that don't get heated up correctly the first time that you're not just painting solder on afterward. You'll see that sometimes I just kind of place the iron there and let everything get hot and usually things just flow into place. So um, that's it. At this point, um, it's probably worth just checking to make sure you don't have any shorts here because it's really easy to do if things don't go as smoothly as they did for me here. Um, going from those two red wires, we've got about two ohms on one end of the spectrum and then turning the, the other way all the way we end up with about 10k ohms so um, I think you know this is it's also worth mentioning that this is a little different than Jan's instructions too which have you make sure that this part of the potentiometer is not connected to ground but it struck me as a little weird because I think he just has you sort of um, cut away the uh, traces around this and I did that for a couple of the the boards that I modified um, but it, it, it is connected to the ground plane on the other side so it's not really disconnecting it from ground uh, on the other boards I have I kind of painstakingly removed all of the connections to ground on the other side of the board too I actually removed the jack and put it back on uh, but on this one I just found that uh, I was just going to try it without doing any of that and it works perfectly fine so I would avoid any of those instructions about uh, trying to disconnect this from ground. It's just less hacking of the board. So now we're making the uh, DIY Vactrol and that's uh, we're putting the LEDs cathode here uh, and the and a 1k resistor from uh, these two points between these two points and then the anode of the LED goes there. So the way to do that, you know, you'll see that it has to be in kind of a certain orientation for it to work the way I did it. And for me, I just kind of make it do a sort of a split. Um, and I just kind of shorten the legs and then bent them in a weird way, still making sure that the anode and cathode are in the right orientation. So I was just checking the length there and then bending that back leg, the anode leg, backward. So when you look at it, it um, kind of looks like a uh, person who's had a bad slip on an icy sidewalk or something. You know, like this leg is bent backwards and this other one, uh, I had to kind of flatten here. I tried it with the tweezers and that wasn't working so well, so I used a pair of needle nose pliers. And it's just kind of bending that front leg to also kind of tweak out in that bent knee sort of way. And 
And now for the 1K resistor, it goes between those two points, the leg of the cathode and the negative part of that um, capacitor that we removed earlier. If you've got a hole there, great. Um, but like I said, it's usually easier if there's a bit of the component still sticking up to just solder right to that. In this case, I didn't have that either. So I just soldered right to the little blob of solder that, that was still on the board. And that works perfectly fine. This is kind of... Uh, almost like a dead bug style of connecting these components, which works fine. So I'll do the same thing over here, just solder right directly onto the leg of the uh, LED. Now this LED is driven by that op amp that you saw there uh, and um, controlled by the CV input, but its whole purpose is to kind of brighten and dim as the CV changes. And what it's doing is it's affecting a light dependent resistor that's facing it. And so we'll take that light dependent resistor and uh, make sure that it's kind of facing directly at the front of the LED and all of that gets sealed up inside this bit of heat shrink tubing. Now some people make that first and then solder it on. In this case, it's just easier for me to visualize how it's going to lay there nicely. And um, so uh, I kind of just placed it in there, looked at how long the legs should be, snipped it, and kind of got it to match up. So, um, you know, I think this orientation of the LED and the LDR are different than what Jan has. Uh, he's just connecting to different parts of the board, obviously, because he isn't using the op amp. So um, this is just how I arranged it, and it seems to work out perfectly. I did it on three different boards, and it worked out great in each case. So the two legs of the LDR are connecting to the ends of these two resistors. So uh, people get really fussy about these DIY Vactrols. And, um, you know, for me, as long as they're facing each other and they've got some heat shrink around them, I'm happy. So especially in this case where we're just hacking a karaoke board. <laughs> so it's not anything critical. Um, but people do kind of seal the ends of them, crimp the ends while they're hot so that it seals out all light. Um, you can, in fact, see a little bit of the LED, but... Um, I don't think it has any impact uh, in this case, whether it's totally light sealed or not. Um, there isn't a streak of light that's coming in and affecting the LDR, that's for sure. And um, and honestly, it helps with troubleshooting to be able to get a little glimpse of the LED when, uh, when you're testing it out with CV. So here it is all in place. The um, bit of heat shrink looks like it's covering both of them pretty well. So uh, we do have to cut a couple traces. One is this uh, trace that's between the jacks and this resistor. And the other is down here between that resistor and the capacitor that we removed. So it's actually that 45 degree bend. So that's a pretty good place to, to grab it. And uh, you can cut traces in different ways. The way I'm doing it is the way that Jan suggested. I had never tried it before, but it's basically using a drill bit. A smaller one probably would have been better here. But uh, And a pin, a pin vise. If you've got a pin vise, this is a great way to do it. I wouldn't recommend necessarily putting it in a drill, um, but uh, just twisting here and kind of cutting through that trace seems to work pretty well. Here with the multimeter, I'm just double checking that it's actually cut them and hasn't made an accidental connection to ground because it's a twist drill and it kind of tears it up a little bit. Um, but, you know, normally I often cut traces with this tool, which is a plexiglass cutter. 
and it works fine, but you know, it's a real hack job. And so I'm kind of proud of this, uh, what's happening in this video where there's actually not really a lot of chewing and cutting of the circuit board. Here there's one last part, which is soldering this one mega ohm resistor. Probably could have done this at any point. Uh, also, I'll mention that this is the last thing to do, but before you plug it in, uh, definitely check between the ground negative 12 and 12 volt pins on that header and make sure that there are no shorts there. Uh, they're obviously connected to some degree, but if there's a short, then you've got a problem. Here I've connected it to my Mutable Instruments um, module, module tester, and um, now you're basically getting all of the, um, the demo. So that's it. Good luck. Oh, <laughs> 